The Princeton Symphony Orchestra opened its season at Alexander Hall with the celebration of Leonard Bernstein's 100th birthday. Bernstein is one of the giants as far as uh, American musical culture is concerned and he's uh, one of the few household names in classical music. Everybody remembers some important way in which they have been touched personally by him. West Side Story, of course, is, is, is his most popular work. He managed to represent the multicultural nature of America and his music. Whether you are a Latin American person, you will find something that comes from your culture. Whether if you like jazz, you'll find something from the jazz. If you came from, let's say, Russian tradition, you will find the same type of thinking as, you know, Russian composers of the time, Shostakovich, for example. Uh, so th th there is a lot of uh, interesting ideas that, uh, that coexist uh, very peacefully most of the time. I've conducted on pretty much all continents where there are orchestras. <laughs> And, uh, but I, I have uh, been calling the Princeton Symphony home for the last 10 years. I really do think that Princeton is a very special place. What makes it different for me is the audience and the way they, um, they look at the concerts, not only as um, a source of entertainment in a, in a beautifully uh, designed acoustical place, such as the Richardson Auditorium, but uh, they do like to, to learn from every artistic experience. With that in mind, the symphony sponsors all sorts of talks and events around their concerts. We have engaged Mr. Leonard Bernstein as assistant conductor at a fee of $125 per week, starting with this week of September 27th. That's Leonard Bernstein's take-home pay. <laughs> For Bernstein's 100th, the archive manager of the New York Philharmonic, Gabriel Smith, gave a talk about Lenny's years at the Philharmonic, and he brought some of Bernstein's own scores. This is Leonard Bernstein's score to Mahler's Second Symphony. This piece in particular has special meaning because he performed it in memory of John F. Kennedy after the assassination in 63. You can see here, these are all examples of his markings. He's very detailed. He has this special pencil called a ready bluey. Uh, one half red at the top, the other half blue at the bottom. And the blue marks are for himself. The red marks, on the other hand, go into the orchestral parts. The Princeton Symphony is really special because it has a close-knit musical community, a lot of really good friends in this group. Uh, it draws on amazing pools of players in New York and Philadelphia. Some of the best players you can find in this country are in those two cities and we're basically right in the middle. The orchestra is made up of very high quality musicians, obviously, that play in other places as well and come together and just have a great time playing together. And recently, our principal flutist, former principal flutist and clarinetist, um, became principal flute and clarinet at the Met Opera, where I also work, so I'm happy to see them there. It's always very easy to program for Princeton because I don't have to think whether the audience is going to like it or not because for those 10 years here I am so fortunate to have the confidence of the audience. The New Jersey State Council on the Arts 
Encouraging excellence in public engagement in the arts since 1966, is proud to co-produce State of the Arts with Stockton University, New Jersey's distinctive university. Additional support is provided by the Geraldine R. Dodge Foundation and Bramnick Law, a personal injury law firm.